Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Morning Buzz. My name is Cindy Tabios, and guess what day it is? Yep, it is Friday the 13th, the most notoriously unlucky day. <laughs> And I know you're probably a little nervous, but don't worry. We have some good luck tips on how you can survive today. Look what I found. This right here is an acorn. Right here, you keep these acorns in your pocket, you ain't never gonna get struck by lightning. To see the whole video, check out our Twitter page with the Twitter handle at BDTV Network. Are you a fan of HGTV or do you like DIY projects? Pinterest fans, I'm looking at you. Mr. Tornagard's home survival class provides CHS students with an awesome opportunity to build real life skills and hands-on knowledge that will prove useful when maintaining the home. So home survival is a half year class. Uh, this is my first year teaching actually. It's been around for a couple decades, honestly. Basically, it's meant to be an all-encompassing class for all different grade levels, uh, guys and girls, that's meant to teach students about everything needed to maintain and repair uh, a home, ranging from an apartment to a large single family home, living by yourself, living with a family, and it's meant to kind of introduce you to aspects that you really don't learn most other places, and then either you're expected to know, or if you don't know how to do it, you end up paying somebody to do it and it can cost you substantially more money to do often simple things. We usually start off with basic hand tools. How do you use things like hammers, screwdrivers, because a lot of students in the class have never even picked up a hammer, and I've even had students swing it backwards and things of that nature. To then we get into power tools, um, you know, various sizes and shapes, and then from there we use those tools for a variety of tasks. Generally there's uh, an individual project in the beginning to get you students used to processing materials, wood, lumber and cutting and gluing and screwing things together. Everything from fertilizing, mowing grass, cleaning up leaves, uh, weeding, and through that we use a lot of the power equipment here that's maintained by the grounds department. Each student usually works in a group of two to three to build a wall section which ranges from four foot to eight foot high where students screw, cut and nail together two by fours, put drywall on it, put a window in it, apply some electrical to it to put some receptacles, a light switch, an outlet, a light smoke detector, then they spackle that, paint it, and then either I or one of the group members puts a hole in the wall so that they learn how to you know, patch a hole in the wall in case you ever have to do that. Students from all different backgrounds, you know, different grade levels, guys and girls are both welcome. And like I said, if you've never seen a hammer before or if you know, you've built a house, there's space for you in the class. It's a great way to have fun while picking up beneficial knowledge for the future. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Did you hear about the all-night dodgeball event? Student Council is holding its first uh, all-night dodgeball event this January 27th from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. <laughs> Any other questions? It's not quite going to be like the movie Dodgeball, but it still will be a lot of fun. It could get a little competitive, so make sure you're wearing athletic clothes. You'll definitely be getting a little workout in. <laughs> each team can be 10 to 12 people, but it's required that each team have four of each gender, so at least four boys and four girls on each team. The cost of the event is $10 per student, but if you bring in a cereal box donation for Mercer Street Friends, your ticket will be $7. Forms are due January 20th, 3 p.m., the VP's office. People can pick up forms in the Student Council Bulletin Board, which is across the main office, and bring them to the VP's office with their money and their team members. Do you want to help build a well in Africa? All you have to do is go to Pennington Bagel this Friday and Saturday and tell them that you're part of the Wishing Well project. 20% of the proceeds go to our Global Public Service Project to help bring clean water to villages who desperately need it. If you're a student with a part-time job, probably minimum wage, you might want to talk to Mr. Crognail to learn more about his cool co-op program. Good morning, Hopewell Valley. My name is Mr. Crognail. I am one of the business education teachers here at the high school. I've taught personal finance. I've taught computer essentials. I currently, right now, am also the supervisor of, of co-op. So what is co-op? Co-op is a structured learning experience where students can have a part-time job, earn credits, go to work, and gain valuable life skills and career awareness on a job. It's very flexible. You can put this on your college transcripts, your resumes, future resumes, you earn credits, 
you get a grade. It's nothing that's going to weigh or bog your schedule down with any extra or additional work. If anything, you're going to work and you're earning money and at the same time you're exploring different careers and you're gaining life skills as well. If you're a senior and you choose to do so, you can take classes in the morning, classes that you need to graduate, and then in the afternoon you can go to work on your particular job. So let's just say for example that you work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. The days that you are off, you have to put in a minimum of 15 hours a week, which is nothing. Most students want to earn more hours, gain more money, and what happens is that student is saving for college, earning additional monies, and gaining credit at the same time. So instead of maybe taking something in the afternoon, an elective or something in the after afternoon, and you want to decide that, hey, listen, I want to go to work, you can go to work in the afternoon and earn money and get out at 11.30 or 12 o'clock whenever your schedule ends. The nice thing about that is the days that you're off, you're off. You just go to your classes in the morning, and if you're off from work Tuesday, Thursday, you're done. So that is another option, and I have students as well that have done that as part of the co-op program. Juniors, seniors, get involved. If you're doing something already, why not put this on your transcripts? Why not put this on your college application? Why not earn credit for something that you're doing already? This is a way to explore, and it's a great opportunity, and I want people to know that it's out there. And again, if you have any questions, any concerns whatsoever, come see me. I'm located in room 302 and I'll be more than happy to sit down with you and explain it in more detail. Getting work experience is a great way to stay on course. Speaking of on course, but um, shh, check out the student workflow video. Today we're going to take a look at some of the changes in on course classroom that affect how you send and receive assignment documents. Let's get started. After your teacher has created an assignment and added a few resources, it will be available for you to access. You will open the assignment. As you can see, it will look a little different. Instructions will be at the top, resources below, a field for you to send a message to your teacher, and the turn-in history at the bottom. You only need to click on a box to access a document. Clicking on a web link will take you directly to the attached website. Google Documents will have one of two icons. A blue icon indicates that the Google document can be accessed in the view only mode. A multicolored icon indicates that a copy of the Google Doc will be saved to your Google account where you'll be able to make changes. Notice that new information is generated when you copy a document to your Google account. The date and time the assignment was started will be recorded here. Just click on Turn In when you're ready to submit the assignment. Your teacher will make any necessary edits and comments, then return the document to you. Notice that a new message has been generated indicating the time and the date the Google document was returned you'll be able to see a grade if it was assigned. Clicking on the Google document will allow you to view comments and edits made by your teacher. You also have the ability to make any changes you would like. To resubmit the document, simply click the Turn In Again button. Turn In History keeps a record of when each document has been turned in. You will see the date and the time associated with each document, and each document name is a link. That's it for this week's Morning Buzz. Stay tuned next week and we'll have a return of Bulldog Buddies. So don't fret, furry friends of CHS. Thanks for watching.